Okay, well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to another episode of Humanity Matters. Uh, I'm Michael McCutcheon. Um, the lovely co-host down here is uh, Miss Annette Mendel, and um, here's our one and only, one of the most intelligent men I know, oh, Albert boy. Torcaso. Don't get me in trouble. Hey. <laughs> that's funny. All right, I'm sharing this, and then you see what I'm doing with that, and that's because... You know, the Facebook Live thing's a great thing, but it can be extremely distracting because if your device, you know, cell phone device or what have you, you might see it freezing up and then all of a sudden you're over there, uh, well, I better look at this. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to take the time to go ahead and shut that off. It's still going to be on my site, but uh, it's dangerous because it's distracting. And what can happen is you could end up not looking at the camera, at you, the audience, and not looking at your guests when we have them. And importantly, is it as, just as importantly, not looking at your co-host. So I think that it's important to let you know that this is a series for all of us. And I think it's important that we make sure we look at a person and we listen to a person. In fact, I would say that one of the biggest problems we have on the planet is our refusal to listen to each other. In fact, I'll go a little bit further with that. I would say that if we don't like the opinions or thoughts or lifestyles of other people, we've become, how do I put it? So resistant to it that we don't even communicate with people like that anymore. Even in Facebook, if, if you don't like somebody, you block them. And, you know, we're becoming anesthetized, we're becoming like robots, and I think robots treat people, the future robots will probably treat people better than we do. And, and I find another thing that's ironic, we have social media, everybody's texting, Facebooking, uh, they're doing Instagram, Twitter, but they're not talking to each other in real life. It's like, Somehow, because of the barrier, even though people may know who you are, if it's through Facebook or if it's through a call that the person is far away, you can say things, you can do things, you can text them. But if they're next to you, it's almost as if you can't relate to them. And, and that's a very scary thing. But uh, that said, you know, I know humanity is going to be all right. I know humanity is going to be changing. As a matter of fact, I forgot to tell you that this is called Humanity Matters Resiliency. And actually, we're going to be talking about being resilient. But before we do, I want to re-welcome Annette Mendel. And I want her to have us get a couple of seconds of silence here. She's going to name the people who recently passed. And we have a local person who recently passed. Her name is, her first name is Donna. And Annette's gonna go ahead and tell you who everybody is and we'll go from there. And then we'll get into resiliency and we might get, you know, we might do a sidebar about how we're not communicating with each, with each other. We might do a little something, something, we'll see. But I do wanna hear your stories. So I need you to call that number you see on your screen. I don't want you to be afraid to call. You call in and you tell us your story. What are you resilient about? What have you overcome? What are you overcoming? What do you want to overcome? And what makes you think you can? So 231-2288, but right now we're gonna pass it on over here to the net. Okay, the woman that he mentioned is Donna Saunders. So we wanna keep her family and friends in our prayers. Now I will go on with the memoriam to people that we knew in the entertainment and other areas of our lives. 
Hugh Hefner, Jerry Lewis, Dick Gregory, Monty Hall, Tom Petty, Y.A. Tightly, Fats Domino, the victims of Las Vegas and Texas victims recently, the church victims, Robert Guillaume, Roy Dotrice, Ralphie May, and today, Roy Holiday. Roy Holiday died earlier today. He's a former baseball player. He died in a plane crash, as a matter of fact, earlier today, apparently at about noon. But uh, we already have a call, so I, I think I'm going to let Annette answer that call. <coughs> oh, and I want to also include the victims of the hurricanes. Yeah, all the hurricanes. And uh, I would say the people that passed away in general. Yes. Okay, okay call? caller, you're on. Hey, what's up, guys? Long time to speak. Yeah, it's been a while. Who is this? It's Brian. Come on now. Well, I didn't know, Brian. How you doing, man? Hi, Brian. I, I, I miss you all. Sorry I haven't been touched in, you know? Yeah, we haven't heard from you in so long, I forgot your name. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I still remember your number off my heart, guys. And uh, I, I actually lost a friend, unfortunately, back in May who passed away. Her name was uh, Laura Crisco. We yeah. knew each other through church, and uh, she passed away at 32 years old of a blocked artery. Oh, whoa, man. When whoa. did that happen, Brian? Back in May. Oh, well... We, we sent our condolences. So, Brian H., how you doing? I've been great. I've been missing you guys, and uh, I've matured a lot since I've last talked to you, and I really want to be reconnect with you all. Well, you know, you can always give us a call. Um, now, you say you don't have my phone number, but what you need to remember, Brian, is when I used to have my credits going, I had the phone number visible, but, you know, anybody that needs to contact me, they can I, actually, I, I, remember your, I remember your cell phone number, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm going to give that number out. I'm not afraid. We have yeah, ourselves. 412-559-2731. That's the one, 412-559-2731, Brian. <laughs> yeah, uh, what do you guys think of the Penguins' recent um, claim to fame, doing real well? Um, they're resilient. They'll, they'll be doing okay. I think they got rid of a lot of really good players. <laughs> I think that getting, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about sports per se, but I, realize that. I, know. But, but I will say this, Brian, I think they made a mistake in some of the people they let go, but then that happens with every sports team. But I, I want, but I want to know what is Brian's, how are you resilient? Tell us your story. Okay. Give us a resiliency story. What have you, something you accomplished, something you overcame, something you I've, went through? I've, I've, I've overcame my, um, 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 I've overcame the um, um, smoking. I mean, I'm down to like one cigarette a day. That's Are you serious, Brian? Congratulations. All right, touchdown, Brian. <laughs> hey, Brian. What? Are you willing to reveal your last name? Um, uh, 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 sure. Uh, well, tell us uh, your, tell us your name. M um, you can I, do. I, I, I usually don't. I, I usually only do that if it's in public. All right. Well, that's all right. Well, the reason why I was going to ask you to do that is being that you were a former co-host with us. I would like to come back. Well, you can maybe do that. We'll have to talk to our crew. That, that might work out. So you overcame smoking. Some of the other things in life that you've overcame, Brian, what were they? Like, um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't drink, I don't drink as much beer as I used to. Oh, well, that's really good. I that's good. Have better I have much better friends around me. Oh, okay. Nowadays. Now, Brian, yes. What, yes. what prompted you... To make that decision, what prompted me was lo was losing opportunities with you guys, and not and 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 take, and, and, and being um, and and wanting to be less self centered and more about other people. Well, I like appreciate I that. Well, that that's a great thing. That's a wonderful thing, Brian. And, and, I, and, I, and I love you guys. You know what I mean? You're like my <laughs> you're like my big brother. 
Well, there you go. Well, you know, I tell you what, you know how to get in touch with me. I, um, I still share stuff with you on Facebook sometimes. And as a matter of fact, it was funny before we just, just before we uh, went live, I was inviting people to tune in. So I'm glad you're here. But uh, I am too. I'm very glad you're here. Now, next month, Brian, we are going to have ourselves, we're scheduled to have a ventriloquist, ventriloquist, how do you pronounce that? Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. And we're going to do a Christmas and holiday presentation using the uh, Mannequin American. And uh, we might have to reset things up, but there's a possibility that we might have room for you, possibly for, for December. It's a possibility. I have to talk to Mike and Annette about it, but we would have a transportation issue. I will let you know that. Uh, uh, I, I could get over there on my own. And but uh, it's a possibility, but it's going to be a very special. And for everybody out there, I want you to tune in because. Did you, did you hear me? I, I can get from my. I family. heard you, Brian. I heard you, Brian. But uh, we are going to have a very special episode. And we're actually going to do a little bit of rehearsing in between. You know, but the, I want the audience to understand that. You might think this is going to be interesting based on we're going to use a, a ventriloquist, but we're going to celebrate the holidays and, and of course, having a mannequin American or, or a puppet will attract children and hopefully other people of all ages. So I do want to, all of you to tune in. Now, I don't know exactly what the first Tuesday in December is, but well, maybe... I, I know, I know, I know. What is it? What is it, Brian? It's December 5th. Okay, that sounds right. So on December the 5th, we're going to make some changes. But Brian, um, I wanted you to give us one more thing that made that did a major change in your life in the last 10 years. What's one massive thing? Well, it was massive that you reduced your smoking and your alcohol uh, intake. That's massive. Is there anything else that you had to personally overcome or any of your friends overcame? Um, uh, 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 yes, yeah. over, oh, oh, over, over, over seven years ago, I got away from, I got over a relationship that was not good to me with a woman that was not good to me. Oh, okay. So you've accomplished a lot then, Brian. Yes. And I graduated college also from Korea now, too. Well, that's a big deal, graduating college. And you... Did a degree in communications or something, right? Yes, yes. See, I know a little bit about you, Brian. I didn't forget. You, you no. thought I forgot there, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you forgot, I forgot. Well, we didn't forget you. We still love you, Mike. We still love you, uh, Brian. So I love you too. Hey, I'll give you a bus ride, okay? All right, man. Well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be home late, so call me after 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Sounds good, my man. Hey, Annette, you stay cool and you stay cool, Mike, and okay. have fun, okay? All right, we'll see y'all later. See you, Brian. Okay, thanks. Now, I'm gonna actually pop out this phone again because I realized. I needed this phone, not to distract me, but to tell you a little bit about you. What? That doesn't sound right, does it? I'm talking about people. Well, I'm going to show you something. Well, I can't really show you, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. You see, on this phone, this is commonly known as a smartphone or a smart device. Right now, I have the Facebook Live. And in the background here, I have a YouTube video. Hopefully it won't play. I'm going to click on it. Hopefully it won't play. And it is nine, oops, it started playing. <laughs> nine most important things you need to know when starting a business. And every day, I have in my inbox, through my email, and notified directly to my phone, because I subscribed and I pressed the little bell on the YouTube subscription. Every day I get motivation. <laughs> yeah, I got a little blooper. I get motivated. I don't know what I got. I get more, whatever it is. Motivational speakers. 
coming and uh, in, I get an inbox here and I get uh, videos every day. Get videos that Les Brown has done, that Les Brown was doing webinars and seminars. I have Erie Thomas. I have uh, sometimes uh, Tony Robbins or Anthony Robbins. And even TJ, I believe his name is TJ, T.D. Jakes. I think that is it. Is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. T.D. Yeah, Jakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so every day in my inbox, I get some inspirational message. But I won't be honest about something. A lot of times these motivational speakers sound fantastic. And I'm sure if, if Brian or Jack or Jane or, or Annette or Mike or who knows, I want to make sure I'm good. You listen to these things and you know, in life, they tell you what you need to do to win. You know, Eric Thomas says he works night and day. He says he doesn't stop working on what it is he wants to do he doesn't stop grinding. He doesn't watch TV. He doesn't drink alcohol. He doesn't do anything until he gets his daily goals met. And, you know, they'll tell you all these rules for success. But the truth is that most people on Earth, throughout the history of Earth, most people don't make it in their dreams. Most people... They just don't, no matter what they hear, no matter how many mentors they may have, no matter how much help they may have, they don't make it. So I came up with something I think is the reason. I would like each and every one of you to subscribe to a lot of these mentors and have them come into your inbox. Watch these videos like I do. I watch so many that Annette rules her eyes, and you know you do, right? Yeah. Admit it, sometimes it gets on your nerves. Yeah. Because I'll be playing those instead of the music, and Annette loves her music. But I think here's the problem. A lot of times it's hard to relate. And it's hard to relate because you hear all these things that you need to do. Things that you can achieve. But there's like the bridge is closed. So I want to try to help you cross that bridge. You know, if a mentor says to you, you got a man up, you got a woman up, you got to grind. You know, nothing that they're saying is, is a lie. Nothing that they're saying is not true. But what if you don't know how? What if you have had your entire life of Failure, people putting you down, tearing you to shreds. You know, you can listen all day long to these things, but you may not be able to physically or mentally take the action. But I know it's in you, because I know it's in me. So what I want to do is I want to bridge something for Mike, bridge something for Annette, bridge something for Albert, bridge something for you, bridge something for, something for Diane Torcaso, Bridge something for Patty over there where Diane lives. That's right, Patty. You better be watching. <laughs> Diane, if Patty ain't watching, you better call her up and tell her to watch. I want to make this bridge work for you. So I'll tell you what. When you feel really, really down and you hear these motivational speakers and you think, it almost sometimes it almost makes you think, Man, I must be pretty weak mentally or physically. I want you to say, no, I'm not. See, evil may get to you, but no, I'm not weak. And we're going to get to that call in a minute. I want you to think this. If a mentor suggests you have to learn vocabulary and increase your vocabulary, and he mentions or she mentions you have to network with like-minded people. And you have to do that. And you have to do this. I want you to start with something I know you can do. I want you to get to a library. 
or go online and work on one thing as that mentor said and start really working on it. So let's start with increasing your vocabulary. You can do that. You can go to the library. You can get online one way or another. And let's say you're bedridden. Let's say you're bedridden. You're paraplegic and you're bedridden. You don't know how or cannot use or do not have the money at this time to get online. But somehow you have a phone. I want you to start calling that library and asking them, do you have people that can connect me with other people that will come to my house, that will teach me for free or low cost or whatever the cost is to improve my vocabulary? And then you're going to learn it. Then you're going to become even more resilient. And you're going to start learning that vocabulary. And then you're going to keep listening every day to these mentors. And you move to the next step. You see, because even though these are wonderful mentors, and a lot of them have made, if you can put Les Brown, the late Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, the late Jim Rohn, the late Earl Nightingale, the living Les Brown, the living uh, Dr. Willie Jolly, and you put Dr. Late Wayne Dyer, and you put like uh, Tony Robbins together collectively, you're looking at people that collectively made probably close to a billion dollars. But the problem is, if I have a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, and I can't comprehend it, or it ain't working for me, or I'm so bogged down in depression, or I'm so bogged down in misery, or I just, I'm sitting on that psychological tack, I don't think I could do it, then I need you to still listen to these things. Maybe even listen to me. Just like when Brian said that we still matter to him. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think we mattered to Brian. I'm glad we do. And Brian, we do love you. I mean that. Mike knows how I feel about him. I bawled Mike out because Mike doesn't wear a coat in the winter. I bawled him out. Get a shot of Mike. I bawled him out. <laughs> Let's get a shot when you get him, man. I did. I bawled him out. Didn't yes, I bawl you yep, out? Yep. Yes, he did. Yes. Because yes. we do really love you. And I know it's, you know, this show's not normal. Let's be honest about it. It's not normal. We look in the world today, massive shootings, Sad, people though. hating each other, racism, political, politicalism. Well, guess what? Right here, we give a dang. For real. So what I want you to do, I want you to start going to YouTube, finding motivational speakers. Now, when you subscribe, you get yourself a YouTube account if you don't have it. You subscribe. There's a little bell on the right-hand side. You click on that, and you will get a video in your inbox every time they upload one. Now, there's a really good series that's one guy named Evan Carmichael does. And Diane, you need to start doing these things, too, because I know that's probably you on the phone. Now, here's the thing. This is what you do. If you don't have the income, if you are massively depressed, or you think you can never get to your dream, you're 18 years old, you're 19, you're 119, I don't care. I don't care about your situation because I know you can overcome it. So if you can't get that group of people yet, like-minded, or they can help you get your business going, or they can help you meet the right people if you want to get your TV show on the mainstream. Something that I want to do. Maybe you can't get that part of what they say. Not yet. Work on something you can. And improving your vocabulary. Trying to learn a language. Maybe learning how to read if you don't know how to read. Well, you can do it. In fact, I'll share this with you. I don't tell Diane that I'm proud of her all that much. It's not that I don't want to, I just, we are foolish. And a lot of us are foolish in life. We, we forget to tell people what they've achieved and how proud we are of them. I'm very proud. Diane has always had a problem with spelling. 
Hey, I'm not that great either at times. Diane learned how to get onto Facebook. Diane has learned how to start doing text. Diane has learned a great deal. That's resilience, my friend. That proves to me that there is nobody on this planet that is a waste of space. Nobody on this planet that can't make their dreams come true. But you want to know why we don't make it? Your brain and mind. We limit ourselves. So maybe we don't know how to get 15 investors. Maybe we don't know how to, or we just can't get used to writing down our dreams or doing the visualization or the meditation or whatever. Pick something you can do. Pick something that's free. But you're already resilient. Think about what Brian just said. He's reduced dramatically in his smoking and in his alcohol or his beer. I want, you to, I want you to really tune in to what he said, because I know Brian. Brian was heavily into his smoking. I mean, I felt so bad, because the man would stop every five minutes, it seemed like, and want a cigarette. Wow. Now, I have Mike over here. I'm still working with him to, to, to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, we all have our addictions, and. I don't do what I need to do. I need to work on my eating, believe me. But we can do it. What my message here is, in case it's not specific enough to you, what am I saying? I'm saying you're resilient. There are things in your life that you've accomplished you don't even think about. Because maybe you've, you've gotten through them, or maybe you have a million different bad things happen to you in your life every single day or every single month or every single year. Maybe you've never really felt the happiness, the success, but you had that. So I want you to realize that because guess what? We're gonna answer this call and then Mike's gonna tell us something he overcame, something he learned, something about his dream or, or something. And then we're gonna put Annette on the spot. And then that gets real nervous when I put her on the spot. Believe that. She's like, I don't know what I'm. But there's something. In fact, if Annette or Mike think about it, one of their accomplishments is being here. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, it ain't easy doing what we do. I might make it look easy. A lot of other people that are better than me at different things. But it ain't easy. Especially when you do it all because of other reasons, you do it all spontaneously or extemporously. Uh, ex I think that's how you pronounce that right? I don't know. Extemporously, something to that effect. But with that, you know, we're going to put Mike in a position of empowerment. Okay. And I'm not answering that call. Okay. I think I know who is. Okay. So, uh, caller, you're on the air? It's, it's good old Diane. Hi, Diane. <laughs> I told you it was Diane. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Glad you said something about Donna, the one that lives on that same where I live. That was good. That was good. Yeah, but lower your phone, Diane. I can't. I mean, can't her TV. I mean, lower your TV, not your phone. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not near my smoke control. But I will say you need to help Rose and me on that YouTube thing. And Patty. Patty is Not so loud, Diane. You're That's killing Patty. my ears. You're killing our ears, Diane. <laughs> Patty's watching. Oh, Patty is watching? Yeah. Okay. She Pi Hi, watching. Patty. She's she shy. All right, Patty. I want... Patty, guess what? You're coming on the air very soon, young lady. Yes, I'm Patty. I mean Patty. you. I mean the real Patty. She's going to have to come on. Anyway, so tell us, Diane, something you overcame... Give us some, I, something. I overcame what you said. Though. You know, I overcame how to do Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. And, and email. <laughs> and I'm not good at email because I don't know how, like I said, I don't know how to spell. So I don't well, know you're, you've come a long way. There's other things you overcame. Well, you should try to teach me and Rose. That, yeah, we'll have to work on that. But you need to get that guy, uh, that TJ... 
TJ, you know the preacher man on mm -hmm. that, your show. I'm not sure where he's at, Diane. <laughs> you have to call him up and ask. I don't know where he's at, Diane, but we'll work, we're working yeah, on that he's one. A, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, well, I like Eric Thomas also, but Eric Thomas huh? is a guy named Eric Thomas. But well, he then is. Let me get him on. He is rough, believe me. No, he no, I'm he don't give you any outs. He don't give you any outs, man. He. He, he doesn't play. He's like, you need to get up and grind. <laughs> he doesn't play. Well, so, was, was that guy Brian just called before me, was he, was he a host on here at one time? Yeah, he was on at one time. Oh, well, he wants to be back on again, huh? Yeah, he wants to be. That's a good thing. So tell us, Diane, now, I know one thing you overcame. Remember when you were in the hospital years ago, you had your, your arm got broken in like three or four oh, different that, places? That, that's old stuff. But you overcame it, didn't you? Oh, I, I, you overcame, I overcame it. See? Well, there you uh, go. That's old, and that's old garbage. I wouldn't say it was garbage, Diane. There's a lot of people that have things that they don't get healed, like there are people that have um, knee replacements, and sometimes they never heal right. So if you... We're able to yeah, overcome yeah, that. Yeah, that's something to be still thinking about. have that, and they still don't overcome. That's what I'm saying. So be glad and, and thankful that you oh, were blessed to overcome. Yeah, I wanted to say something about that. She's overcoming with her glaucoma. Okay, well, wait a minute, Diane. What, Diane? Uh, so how about Rose? Rose has uh, overcome her glaucoma. Remember well, that? that's a great thing. But now Mike wants to say something, so you're going to have to hold on. No, well, I was just talking Go about. Go for it, Mike. I was just talking about communication. When you said the word communication, yeah. and I'll tell you why it's important to communicate. I was leaving my home one morning going to work. Yeah. And one of the ladies that I would take care of was standing on the side of the building. She was a smoker. Right, she, right. she had to stop to catch her breath. Right. So me, I'm in a rush to get to work. I, right. see, I see her, and I'm like, oh, hi. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened to her, Elle? She expired. She died. She died. And now, and now I feel like that I could have gave her more of my time. I feel a little bit guilty because I was in so much of a rush worrying about me getting to work. And meanwhile, well, guess you know, what? I, I, didn't, I, I, I could have talked the, to her. The two and things I I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm, I'm going to say this publicly. You could have gave her more time. You're going to always feel guilty. But at the same time, it wasn't your fault. I mean, yeah, we need to take the time. We need to take the time. But we got to also remember there's a lot of stuff going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we need to take the time to say, we love you, Diane. We, we love you, your, your girlfriend, mm -hmm. Terry. Mm -hmm. By the way, Terry, I don't know if she's watching, tell her, I said hi. Mm -hmm. But that's a devastating feeling because you are going to feel that way. Yep. But it wasn't your fault. And we have to keep in mind, whether you believe in a God or you're an atheist, there is a cosmic being. Uh, there's a cosmic being and our destinies at some point, you know, it's our time to go to the next dimension mm -hmm. or to heaven or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I can say is Sometimes we need to slow down. Right. And sometimes we need to take risk. Like, you know, sometimes we know that somebody's scamming us even. But we might help them anyway. And that's because it's not about them. It's about doing what is right. And, you know, you, I mean, you never know why people are playing a scam. You don't know what happened to them. You don't know why they got pulled. And so I would say we need one word in this world we need more of. And it's not love. Love, yeah, obviously. But you know what the main word we need? Compassion. Compassion. How many times have we turned a deaf ear to people? Just because, you know, maybe we didn't like them because we didn't like their politics or the way they looked or where they came from or the fact that they were rich, the fact that they were poor. We need to stop that. We need to have compassion. It's not easy. Believe me, 
Sometimes people get on my last nerve, but we got to do it. But, but, you know, the thing about it is, Mike, that wasn't your fault. We don't know what your history is. You, I mean, you don't know why you took off. I mean, and, and also, let's think about this. You were worried about getting to work because you were worried about losing your job that you needed to survive. You know, it doesn't excuse it. I'm not saying that it excuses it. But I understand it. So don't, don't you know, don't really, don't really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't feel guilty forever. You know, maybe pray to God or something about it. Maybe we'll get another psychic on here and we can look up that person. But, uh, but you know, I understand that. But we do need to communicate and we have to have compassion. The word of the day and the word of the century and the word of the next hundred billion years should be compassion. Well, why don't, why don't, why don't Ned talk about her, her cognish? Oh, now Diane thinks she's the co-host. <laughs> yes, I'm the co-host now. Hey, she's here now. I'm going to more. <laughs> <You think? laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> You don't want me to be like Cheryl. La, 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 la. Diane, behave yourself. Uh, hello, Cheryl. How you doing? Is Cheryl Morgan here, too? No, Cheryl's at home relaxing, chilling out. Well, then who are you? I'm oh, saying hi to her. Oh, I'm just hi. saying hi. All right, Diane. Now, what was that question? Make it snappy, kid. We have two more calls more. waiting, Diane. Huh? We have to hurry up and get moving so, because we I got... Know. All right, well, we, well let, let us get this call, and then we can have right, that. Right, do that. All right. Bye. Uh, Annette, you got a call to do. Caller, you're on. Hello? Annette? Hi. How you it's doing? Patty. Oh, hi, Patty. I decided to call in. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Patty? Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Hey, Patty, you heard what I said, right? Oh, yeah. I disagree with you, though. What? <laughs> you disagree with me on what? Oh, not coming on TV. Oh, come on. <laughs> Patty, Patty, come on. Patty, Patty. Patty. <laughs> oh, and by the way, T.D. Jakes is out of Texas. Oh, T.D. Jakes. There you go. Mm -hmm. He's out of Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah but that, but anyway. But that one guy, Eric Thomas, whoo, I've that man don't. I've him in my whole life. Well, he, oh, man, he don't play. He tells you, get up in the morning and grind. Don't, don't watch TV. Don't do this. Don't even eat until you get your work done. Well, um, <laughs> I've been listening to, um, the, the thing that's been helping me lately is I've been listening to a, a woman who has studied the brain and the memory. Okay. And she talks about changing your thoughts. Um, okay. Kind of not really positive thinking, but like don't let any negative thoughts come throughout your mind your brain, and we always have a minute before we start to think about the thoughts, because okay. a thought comes and we have a minute where we can say, no, I don't accept that, or yes, I do. So the, who is this lady? Do you remember her name? Dr. Caroline Leaf, L-E-A-F. Okay, write that down, please. I'll be checking her out. She's very good. Well, the, you know, the doctor, the late Dr. Wayne Dyer. Is he gone? Did he die? Yeah, he died a few about a year or so ago. Oh really? I used to watch him. Oh my TV. goodness! Yeah. You know he he's good too. Yeah. And, I and I'm also there's a guy named Deepak or Deepak Chopra. You want to check out? You know, but one of the things that I noticed and also that uh, Les Brown says is he says argue with yourself even if you have to do it in public. Tell um, he said that um. One time, he had to do a speaking engagement, and the negative thoughts came in, and he was like, his brain was saying, you can't do this, Les. You don't have a college degree. You don't have a master's degree. You ain't like all these people. And Les said he had to stand up inside himself, and he had to say, shut up. I got bills to pay. And he actually said it out loud. <laughs> and sometimes you just have to say, shut up. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Yep. But I wanted to tell you, um, I've known Diane since 2011. I've known Diane for a couple of days. <laughs> and, and like, I wanted to say, I've seen 
I mean, she has grown so much. Oh, yeah. And I count her as my best friend in the building, and I really love her. And um, she checks on me every day, and um, we try to do different things in the building when I feel up to it. But my biggest thing that I overcame was leaving my family home and moving to a high-rise because wow. my family home, uh, I just had a limited income. Right. It had a hole in the ceiling and it was leaking. Oh, boy. And it needed new windows. And all my neighbors took really good care of their houses. Right. And um, so one day I just decided, I, and it was draining me of my money. Right, um, right. So one day I just decided, I just got to get out of here, you know. And I got tired of, like, shoveling the snow. And I don't blame you. I'm tired of shoveling it, too. And um, so I moved to this building, and my, none of my friends um, thought that I was going to make it because I don't like change at all. Mm. And I pretended like I was moving to a hotel for a week. I thought, okay. oh, I was going to move to this hotel for a week. And um, somehow that clicked my mind into accepting it. Accepting your place. Good. And I, I tell all the senior citizens I know now that I might meet outside or at the grocery store, you got to get rid of your house. you got to move to a high rise. You know, they do everything for you. I mean, there's no worries. I know I have a roof over my head. I thank God for that. And um, so that was the, the biggest change I've ever made in my life. <laughs> Well, I'm proud of you. Very good. And by yeah, the way, here, like, there we go. Go ahead, Patty's in the house. Yeah, I've been here 15 years. Well, you know, I ask about you a lot too, don't you? We would oh, live yeah, in a. I, do. I, I know that you do, and I, I oh, ask yeah. about you also. You and the next. Well, we can use some prayers. I can tell you that. We have. Um... We would live in a high rise if we didn't have cats. Yeah. Oh, I, I had a cat when I came here, but. He no, we have a friend. few cats. <laughs> Yeah, we have a couple. I had three cats when I was at, at my house. Right. Then I had a cat when I moved here. And, uh -huh. But then he passed away three years after I moved here. Oh, boy. And I am I have asthma, and I'm allergic to cats, so wow. my doctor didn't want me to get another that one. That makes sense. However, so, um, I do pray for you all the time. And, I appreciate um, it. I lift you up to the Lord. Well, we could use prayers for Mike, too. Oh, sure. You know, but uh, one awesome. thing, Patty, is I have some good news and I have some not so good news. Oh. The good news is I appreciate the call, but the not so good news is we want your face on the, on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Think of it as not being on TV, but just looking out the window or something. <laughs> You're just sitting down, and it just happens to be that there's these cameras that can happen to see you. You can do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's I not can't. a big deal. You'll, you know you'll what? overcome it. You know what? I had Diane on video a few times, and Diane just cracks up so much. <laughs> or, I, or I would have her on here with you. But I'll oh, tell I you what. That would be really cool. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Here's what we'll do. We'll put you and Diane in the audience with a microphone. Oh, yeah, over like where those uh, kids sit sometimes. Yeah, how about that? Can you handle that? <laughs> That'll be um, easier. But no. Diane and I, when we get together, all we do is laugh, so we'll be laughing and laughing. <laughs> well, we'll call it the laughing episode, huh, Mike? <laughs> we all need to laugh. Yeah. Let people laugh. Well, you know, I, I have to be honest with the audience. Um, I was having, a, I've been having a tough couple of weeks, but you know what? I'm here. And I'm going to stay here. That's really Obviously not going to stay here after 15 <laughs> minutes from now, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean. There's resilience. I have to get ready to go and vote. I only have an hour to vote. <laughs> All right, well, God bless you. We'll see you soon. And make sure that whoever you vote for wins. Oh, God bless you. And I'm so glad I, I have I had the courage to call in. I'm glad you did, too, and I want to see your face with Diane over here. Uh, maybe even de in December. There you go. Oh, I like the tool, Chris. I'd like, to, I'd like to know how to do that. Okay, well, maybe we'll get you there for that day. And also, um, I love you both, Diane. I mean, I'm calling you Diane. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me Diane. Albert and Annette yeah, and, and Mike. Mike. Even though I don't know Mike. Yeah, you I too, Patty. Like, 
about the Lord also. For oh, yeah, he, big time. He talks about. Well, listen, I want you to keep December the 5th open so we can maybe get you and Diane in the audience here. Oh, my goodness. You will be on TV, and you will have a microphone. <laughs> and if you say no, I'm going to go, Mommy! <laughs> Mommy? Yeah, just for the reason of just saying mommy, no, for no good reason, like my mom up in heaven. <laughs> You'll be like, daddy, mommy. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll see, see you. Bye. Right, bye bye. See ya. We lost our call. We lost our call? We lost our call. call. We're sorry we lost you. Come on back. We'd hey, like to hear from you. Come on. You'll be all right. I'm sorry we made some mistakes. So, until that call comes back, you're on. Well, well, this show is an example of my resiliency. When I first came on the show, I was nervous, I think, if I remember. Oh, you were nervous. And I wasn't sure I could get through it. But then once you did it, it was like breathing, and it became easier and easier, and you didn't think about it. It's just something that you do. And... Um, I've overcome loss of family and friends yep. and a deep depression that led me to anorexia or near anorexia because of it. And it took me a long time to deal with that depression. And I, I miss a lot of my family and friends because, well, because they were special you know, my friends were special, and my family I grew up with, and even though they didn't treat me all that good, um, not my mother necessarily, but my other family members, but that's I, a way. I still think about them and wonder about them, you know. Right. So I yeah. want to ask you and... Well, first of all, I want Mike to tell us his resiliency story. I okay. think he missed Go one. Go for it, Mike. Yeah, yeah I, I have a few, Hell. Um, well, we have but, but I about have nine say, minutes. So. Res resiliency comes with every musician in the world. You, you have to be resilient. You have to be, L, because I don't care what instrument you play, I don't care how good you get, you're always going to have somebody that tells you you could be better. Do you know that, Elf? And there's so always going to be somebody that's a little bit better. It, exactly, exactly. So resiliency to me would, would be, I've been, I've been doing a bass guitar for some years okay. now, Elf. I've, I've been doing it for some years, Elf. And um, like, yeah, like one thing that that lady said about Mike McCutcheon that I really I'm proud of is my relationship with the Lord. I have to say. Oh yeah. Um, he he is to me everything. Else. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna ask you, Annette, this question. And it's gonna require some thought. You may not be able to answer it real fast. Maybe, maybe not even today, I don't know. Here's the question I have for you. In a perfect universe, if there was one thing you can do and be the best in the entire world at and make a living and do anything you want as a result, what is the one thing you'd like to do with the rest of your life? Without regards to thinking that you can achieve it, but actually, if everything was right, what is the number one thing? And the second follow-up part of that question is, where would you want to live? If you could live, and there was no obstacles, there was no money, there was no health, there was no political, none of that stuff. Live exactly the way you want, doing what you want. What would Mike McCutcheon want to do? What I would want to do, I would, I would have to say, see all them like chick, them sick children in St. Jude become adults. Okay. That would be, that would be one of the greatest things I would love to see, you know? Okay. Because it's like today, you know, you have people at work today talking about how ugly of a day it is, you know? What do you think this day is to somebody that's dying of cancer? That's true. Out? 
it's probably the most beautiful day they ever seen. That's so true. I would have to say if there was one thing I wish I could do is I would like to see all them kids in St. Jude okay. grow up to be adults. Now, what would you like to do for your living the rest of your life? Where I would like to live, Al? I or, would, or what would you like to do for a profession? Oh, and also where you would like to live? Um, I would, I would love to be a professional bass guitar player. I would love to okay. have my guitar be my And where would you want to live? Where would I want to live? Probably Seattle. Okay. So now, this is where the tough part comes in. What's stopping you? Me. Me. What keeps you from practicing? Me, Nothing. Me, exactly, exactly, yeah. What exactly. keeps you from maybe going to the library and seeing if there's free lessons, watching videos or something? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. there's, an ex there's a reason why I'm asking you this. Mm -hmm. You have the way to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how bad do you want it? Um, I want it very badly, Al. Mm -hmm. I want it very badly. Maybe you should start working on that. Uh -huh. Well, Hope we I, don't lose you, uh, though, on the TV it, show. But, but. but, you know, you got to look at a lot of the great guitar players that lived, Dale. Not, not one of them ever took a lesson like B.B. King, John Lee Hooker, Howling. Then Boy. what's the not, problem? Not, not one of them ever took a lesson. Seems like, to yeah. me, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Seems what? to me. I think we need to push Mike in the right direction. What do you think? Yeah. You know what I think? I, think I know where you can go. Nightclubs. That's yeah, a possibility, yeah, but yeah, what I want to do is yeah. I want to do something. You're going to have to practice, buddy, because you're bringing your guitar December the 5th. Cool. And in January. Now, I don't know, because of what we're doing, if you're going to get a chance to play it right away, but we're going to get you on there. Okay. In fact, I might have Diane, if we had time, I would have Diane call in and say that she wants Mike to play the guitar. Cool, cool. So... I want you to start down that path. Now, here's the thing. You have access to a computer every day. Yeah. Almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Start listening to videos. I know you said you didn't take lessons or whatever. But maybe you could watch videos of B.B. King and how he learned or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to get to it. We only have about okay. three minutes or so. Okay. Anywhere on earth that you can live, any profession that you can make a living with the rest of your life. And if we have time, I'll give you mine. Um, I like to live in a tropical area, except in the hurricanes. Oh, we got one call about, waiting. To worry about. Okay. Other than that, I'd like to live there. What profession, though? I'd like to be an actress. Okay. And you asked her what one thing would she do? Is the one thing you said you would do as an actress? Yes, I'd like to see all or, or the most of abused animals and children have safe, loving homes. Nice, okay. nice, nice. That's nice. And um, I would arrange an organization or something okay. of, of my own to see to it that that happened a lot more promptly than... I'm not saying that those people who deal with that today aren't doing anything. You would just want to add to it. I want to, yeah, I would add to it. Okay, well, let's try to get this call in real quickly. Because I want to hear yours. It's good old Diane. I heard what you said. Do you want to hear him play the guitar, Diane? Well, why not? I've seen him play the guitar. I'm not going to say where he, I, I think he played something when he was up there on that place I've seen him at. Okay, well, Diane, we only have five minutes. So. I know you do. Uh, how did you do that trick? Uh, magic. Okay, I gotta go, Diane. <laughs> right, talk to you later. Bye. We all love it. Be careful. Don't forget the boat. Everybody my here. Ears. Bye. Right, bye. 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 Sorry, guys. That's a little bit loud in here. Um, Annette, uh, Mike said they want to know what I would do. You know, there's a lot of things I would like to do, but I would have to say one of the main things I would like to do is what I'm doing right now, nice. right here. Nice. Al. Continue to be a talk show host. Nice. And the reason is, I there believe is. there's something I'm saying that's helping somewhere, somewhere down the line. Nice. I was very shocked to hear what Brian said. I've heard the same words from other people. To me, I'm just me. 
But if I can encourage somebody, get somebody to move ahead, see that they can do it, because together we can do it. You know, I said this years ago in 2008, actually 2006. I started an episode called Humanity Matters, Yes, We Can. And obviously we know what President Obama did. But we can. So I'm going to leave you with this. We are our own limitation. We must not fear. And when our voices say we cannot, we must, we must literally stand up inside ourselves and say, shut up. Yes, I can. And tonight, I leave you with both Annette standing up and Mike standing up. Come on. And remember, everybody, this is Humanity Matters, and you really do matter. I know we're a little bit off the, there, but guess what, everybody? Can you do it? Yes, yes you, you can. can.